Hello everyone, this is Zahra Asiri. I'm a PhD student in mathematics department at University of Texas at Arlington. In the past, the data was easy, very simple, so easy to read and easy to deal with. And this time, everything is about machine learning, huge amount of numbers, the data is increasing due to, due to the increase of population. Uh, for example, electronic pathology data has, um, has a huge amount of uh, data because they are recording the data gigabyte per second. So uh, uh, for, uh, before you do any analysis for this huge amount of numbers, you need to clean the data. So one of the, the problems you're going to face is something called outliers. So the question how I'm, I'm going to do find the outliers with this huge amount of numbers. Uh, if you have some bin, so it's very easy, but if you have like a big data, you need to think about it before you do anything. So uh, I found out that MATLAB, which is a smart way of finding outliers uh, with a big data, uh, uh, it has uh, something interested. So uh, in the beginning, my data came from uh, the Dr. Pink Lab, where they have an interesting experiment, they test uh, they test uh, um, the signal of the points comes from the rats to check the, um, uh, the activities of the rats uh, before and after applying some uh, pains and the rats. In my part, I got five of the data for the past five rats, and I tried to find the outliers for each uh, uh, one of the rats, uh, and I used um, a method, uh, not only one, but I did different of methods because uh, uh, MATLAB is very smart and give me multiple of those methods. So uh, I'm, I'm happy that I found something called the matrix uh, of the outliers and where I uh, not only test the outlier for each rat, but I test um, the, uh, the, the outlier uh, for a, a single period of time for all the rats. Uh, and where zero means there is no outlier and we go up until the highest number of outliers with 14. And uh, uh, in, the, in the end, I want to uh, show something very interesting because in the beginning, okay, I said I'm going to test, uh, test the outlier, big, huge number. I'm just using only the mean. But I said, okay, I will try the other methods to see how it looks like. And uh, I was surprised that uh, uh, they got huge or uh, different of amount of percent where the mean said, okay, there's 2% of outlier, but cauterize. Is, is, is very high, it's 12%, and the crops and the guest uh, methods uh, taken less than 1%. And I'm here to turn people who work in the data. If you have outliers and you think thinking to use uh, one of those methods, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you that you, you need to be careful because as you see in my result, uh, each uh, method is dealing differently with the outliers. And this is very surprising to me. And uh, when you uh, use different methods, you need to use different ways to treat those method, those outliers. And uh, we have to get that result. And this is very interesting. And uh, we want to, in the end, uh, show the histogram for our distribution. Uh, so you can see the quartilize got the highest percent of the uh, uh, of the uh, outliers going down to the gaps and guests less than 1% of the outliers. And uh, our conclusion and our um, recommendation to people who work in the data and in our study, we examine electronic physiology of the data and we show that uh, it's very interesting each method uh, dealing with the data differently and detected, uh, detected the outliers differently. And uh, as you see our result, we recommended uh, to be very carefully when you, uh, you try to test your uh, data uh, before doing any, any further analysis. And this is because this is not going to harm our uh, community, but it's going to harm the machine learning. And uh, uh, the result is going to uh, appear uh, not uh, correctly uh, fairly well. So we need to be uh, very careful. Thank you so much.